Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Goodness gracious, Switch Pro is back. Or is it? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Well, new details have emerged, including some spicy stuff I dug up, and we gotta dive in and figure out what exactly is going on with this 4K Nintendo Switch that set the world ablaze last night. All right, plus we have new details on Monster Hunter Mayhem and Grand Theft Auto Switch. So it is a jam-packed show. I'm so glad to be here with you. Plus, let me point out that I have a Nintendo Switch OLED. I posted my unboxing and setup yesterday. I'll be bringing you more content soon. So make sure to subscribe, make sure to smash that like button, and make sure to let me know your take in the comments down below. What's going on, everybody? It's Agma Switch Force. I am super pumped. All right, I'm moving in like a few days, but I'm gonna keep you guys up to the minute with the Nintendo news because it's getting really interesting. All right, let's kick it off with a little Monster Hunter love. Over at Tokyo Game Show, Capcom took one of the first slots and they debuted new info on Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is that big expansion announced at the Nintendo Direct and coming next summer. They showed off the titular monster and another monster, but they also revealed two new collaborations for Monster Hunter Rise's base game, one for October and one for November. Now fitting in perfectly with the theme of the spooky season, it's Ghosts and Goblins for October, releasing on the 29th of the month. And then November is Sonic the Hedgehog. They didn't show any footage of what the Sonic collab is gonna be, but I really hope we get to ride around on a hedgehog or an echidna, or fight a giant big cat. I think this will be a really goofy, cool collaboration. And again, I give kudos to the MHR team for delivering some of the best crossovers in the gaming space today. Nintendo could take such a page out of this book and bring it to stuff like Animal Crossing or Splatoon. I mean, collaborations are so cool, especially when you have so many great franchises and Capcom is really setting the bar high with this one. Let me know in the comments down below if you're excited for the new Monster Hunter stuff. And then, ooh wee mama, get ready for some more exciting stuff because it seems like Grand Theft Auto Trilogy is right around the corner. All right, we've heard that this one is going to be a really late announcement in the year and will pop soon after it's debuted. And now there is more fuel to the fire and the most legitimate fuel we've seen yet. I covered the GTA Remastered Trilogy rumor back when Kotaku broke the story a few months ago. Now the game has popped up at the South Korea ratings board and you know the drill with ratings board, all right? It's like a cheese board, a charcuterie board, all right? You know when that happens, you're in for a big meal. And the big meal is going to be a big release of GTA, three of them on Switch, bringing the mainline franchise back to a Nintendo platform for the first time in a forever. And I hope it's really cool. The graphics are touched up, the gameplay is maybe modernized slightly. I think this will be a huge hit. And if it does debut, as the rumors have indicated, around October or November, we are super close to an announcement. I saw some Twitter people saying that, hey, it's actually really close and that's indicated by this ratings board pop-up. I am pumped. I hope they do these games justice, and I think if it comes out this year, boom, the third-party lineup for the holiday season just got real sweet. And coupling that with Nintendo's epic first-party lineup, Metroid, Mario Party, and more, it is going to be a crazy season for Switch. Let me know in the comments down below if you will play GTA on Nintendo Switch Portable, maybe OLED, Vice City San Andreas 3. That's the story and I'll keep you posted as soon as a debut trailer arrives and as soon as a release date is revealed. And now, your worst fears or your greatest dreams are about to be resurrected because yesterday evening, Bloomberg came back at it with a further Switch Pro, Switch 4K report saying that at least 11 developers they'd spoken to have 4K Nintendo Switch dev kits and they're working on 4K games for a coming Switch Pro. Now they named one of them to add legitimacy to this article. Zynga supposedly has a 4K Switch dev kit and they say that this thing is out there and it's been out there and the Switch Pro Ooh, it really is a real thing. Now, convenient timing because the OLED is out in just a week, right? Nintendo's new system that was actually what occurred, it's coming out. So Nintendo immediately came through and said, no, Bloomberg is not right. This is completely false, but is it really? And that's what I really wanna dive into. And I wanna know your take in the comments down below. Do you believe Bloomberg 
or do you believe Nintendo? Now remember, Bloomberg is a very reputable news source that takes this stuff seriously. They have credentials, they have sources, they go back and forth and ensure that their information is correct. And they have impact, right? Bloomberg reports can impact stock prices and shareholders. This isn't just some random website. This is the big leagues. At the same time, Nintendo, I mean, when they issue a post like I'm about to read you, that's also the big leagues, but there's more underneath the surface and new details have emerged that tell me something strange is brewing. And I think we just about figured it out. Let's begin. A news report on September 30th, 2021, falsely claims that Nintendo is supplying tools to drive game development for a Nintendo Switch with 4K support. To ensure correct understanding among our investors and customers, we want to clarify that this report is not true. We also want to restate that as we announced in July, we have no plans for any new model other than Nintendo Switch OLED model, which will launch on October 8th, 2021. Now that is the official response from Nintendo's big company Twitter account. Not Nintendo of America, not Nintendo of Europe, not Nintendo of Japan, Nintendo Co. LTD. And they want you to know that they've got nothing out there except the OLED for $349.99 with a bigger, better screen, and it's coming out next week. Pre-order it if you dare. So we've got Bloomberg saying that at least 11 developers have Switch 4K kits. And we've got Nintendo saying nothing exists. But we've heard this before. Nintendo has done this before. It's a merry-go-round when it comes to denials because they've denied so much. They denied different handheld systems. They're not getting a new iteration. And then the very next day or the next week, a new iteration of like a new 3DS or a DS something was announced. It happened multiple times in the past. And when Nintendo claimed that they weren't stopping Wii U production, the rumors weren't true. Well, the very next week, they surely were true. So it's very typical for a company to go full on denial and push back against a report that threatens to hurt their sales and their plans. And you have to imagine that if people believe that there is a 4K better Nintendo Switch, the pro model that we all can arguably say we wanted more, maybe much more than the Nintendo Switch OLED, that would be a bummer. And the timing of this is oh so perfect or oh so horrible. You might recall that back in the summer, Bloomberg was on the trail of the Switch Pro and then it didn't happen. And Nintendo really fought back and said, KO, Bloomberg don't know what they're talking about. Now I have to imagine Bloomberg didn't take that too kindly. And this article has apparently been waiting in the works. Bloomberg launches it right at the dagger time, before Switch OLED launches and when it could have a bit of a rocky effect on Nintendo. Now, Nintendo Insider Nate Drake over on the Reset Era forum said that Nintendo knew about this article well in advance and actually had these tweets prepared and ready to go as soon as Bloomberg pressed publish. So this has apparently been in the works for a while and it seems like it's this two-headed dragon arguing and butting heads and battling back and forth. How long will it go on for? I do not know. But when Bloomberg says 11 companies have a dev kit, that's not just a errant rumor, that's 11 companies. Of course, Zynga, the named company, came out and said, no, no, we don't have it. But again, this is typical protocol. And if you look at what's going on, the picture becomes very clear. I'll utilize Nate Drake's words once again to help paint the picture here. He says, devs got kits in late 2020 and others in early 2021. As the article implies, which it does, the intent was to launch the Switch Pro this year. But then we had the pandemic and then we had the chip shortage. You're probably well aware that there's this semiconductor chip shortage all across the globe. It's impacting just about every industry, cars, video games, PS5, and yes, Nintendo Switch. So once Nintendo saw that this was not going to work out, that they weren't gonna have the chips to be able to supply and support a 4K device, it seems like they about faced and decided to drop the OLED model as an audible. Now, maybe they always planned two different SKUs, an upgraded screen model and a truly 4K model, but it feels like all evidence, including Bloomberg's reporting and the dev kits being out there as early as last year, show that Nintendo did want to put this 4K switch out this year. That was the plan, that was the goal, and it all got eroded by what's going on in the world around us. Nate Drake also notes that no developer has dev kits for two years, okay? Because the Bloomberg article implies that they still believe the Switch Pro is coming next year. And apparently the games that they're working on are targeting a late 2022, second half of 2022 
launch. And even that might be impacted by the chip shortage and by what's going on because of the pandemic. Perhaps at this point, it will shift and become a true Switch successor. Given the time frame, given that the OLED is just about to come out, given that the Switch itself is still so successful, the OG model flies off store shelves, the light, a pretty cool system. And now the OLED pre-orders sold out, that thing is gonna be a success as well. Do they need to rush out another SKU? We've seen game companies start to adopt the phone model where they release iterative consoles all the time. Mid-cycle upgrades, then it's quarter cycle upgrades, then it's yearly upgrades, and that's where these boxes are trending because that means more money in the pockets of Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. So does this thing come out next year as a souped up Nintendo Switch that plays all the same games? Or does it become shifted to 2023 and then it's a true Switch successor? And you might think, Zach, why are you talking Switch successor when you just said the original Switch is so darn successful? But let me fill you in on a bit of numerology. Nintendo has always kept a very consistent time span between one console's launch date and the next console's announcement. In fact, it's only surpassed 1600 days once. That would be with the Wii at 1662 days between Wii's launch and Wii U's announcement. Typically it's 1300, 1400, 1500, but for Nintendo Switch, it's already at 1,671 days, the greatest gap yet. Now the caveat here is the Switch can do both, so it's also a portable system, and Nintendo has used around 2,000 days between some of their portable consoles. But the point here is that we could be entering the era of the next system. I'm not saying this year or even next year, but 2023, you better start thinking about what the successor is going to be. Whether it's a Switch 2, a 4K Switch, or something totally different. Maybe Nintendo does a home console for 4K and keeps rolling with this OLED awesomeness for handheld. I don't quite know. The point is that we are getting to this level where Nintendo's starting to think about what's next. So does this 4K Switch, the Switch Pro, ever materialize as the Switch Pro? Or is it the Switch 2? And maybe Nintendo is using this hard denial, right? This mm -mm -mm, because it's not gonna be a Switch Pro. It's going to be whatever is next. The Bloomberg article smartly points out that these developers who've been working on 4K games would find it very hard and very upsetting if Nintendo did evaporate the plans. What would they do? They'd have to scale down their games to come out on the current Switch. They'd have to just abandon ship. And it's not unheard of, things do get canceled. Maybe Nintendo is abandoning it for the time being. But regardless, one day Nintendo will have a 4K capable system. And that day is probably closer than you think. It's not outside the realm of the possibility that Nintendo does go yearly iterative and launches a 4K Nintendo Switch model alongside Breath of the Wild 2 next holiday season. Is there a reason why 2022 is shaping up to be a killer year for Switch with open world Pokemon, the sequel to the most awesome Zelda game of all time, probably new Mario, Splatoon 3, who knows what else? Are they building towards something? Were these games just delayed from 2021? Was the OLED the real deal or was it always a 4K? And when will it all happen? We'll have to wait and see. I'm sure more will be uncovered as time goes on and I'll absolutely keep you posted. But I wanna conclude with one final point from Nate Drake, who said in response to Nintendo's tweets that Nintendo just legitimized the article. If this was just a whole bunch of airy fairy nonsense, would they have prepped a tweet to deny it? Would they take the time to publicly, worldwide, call this out as not real? Think about that for a second. Lots of things are said, plenty of rumors pop up, leaks abundant, we talk about them all the time, and Nintendo never comments. So why have they been so hell-bent on going against Bloomberg and this 4K Switch in a year right before the launch of their non-4K OLED model that they want to sell to you. Just think about it. And let me know your take in the comments down below. Will the Switch Pro be back? Or will it be a Switch 2? Or will it evaporate into thin air? Please let me know. And now it's time to get on to our poll. These good polls pop every evening on the community tab, so make sure to check that out once in a while if you wanna be included in the conversation. Today I asked y'all about the N64 Genesis expansion pack, specifically in relation to Nintendo Switch Online and adding these new classic games to the service sometime in late October. You're gonna buy it, you're not gonna buy it, or only if it's cheap. And the spread was pretty interesting. 
44% of you said, yes, you will. And I said it too. I mean, I run an Nintendo Switch channel and I live, breathe this system. So I'm ready for it. 21% said, no, you're not interested at all. And 35%, a pretty whoppingly high percentage, said only if it's cheap. And honestly, I think that's a great answer because if this expansion pack comes in at like five bucks a year on an already cheap $20 a year service, I mean, 25 bucks, that's still only $2 a month. That's totally worth it. I'd say even $10, bumping this boy up to $30 a year, totally reasonable. It's anything above that that starts to feel a bit weird. Like, am I really gonna double the price of Switch Online just to play Mario Kart 64 and Banjo-Kazooie? I mean, some of you very well may, but it does feel like a tough ask, unless there's more to the expansion pack that they have yet to reveal. I'll definitely keep you posted. We got the Smash Direct next week. We've got the Animal Crossing Direct coming and we've got the reveal of the expansion pack. So big times for Nintendo plus Metroid Dread and more Switch OLED. Let me know your take. Hit that like button on your way out. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there, my friends. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I love you so much. This is Good Morning Mario. And until next time, Switch Force out.